peace and blessings, family. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Taye Speaks. This episode number five. Got a very special guest in the house, a brother I know personally. I've been able to work with him. Um, he has a lot of expertise and experience in the health and wellness field. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Curtis Robeson. You know what I'm saying? Let him know what you do, Kane. Well, Kane, okay, it's uh, Curtis. I'm a, I'm a Clevelander, Cleveland native. Uh, I'm a founder of uh, Touched by Health Wellness Institute, a medical researcher and food scientist, and uh, health and wellness is very important to me. So I believe in really supporting our community by providing information, and we do engage in a lot of wellness services that is desperately needed by our people. Right, right. I, I truly appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? For people that don't know Curtis, uh, he worked with a lot of people at the homeless shelter. He do a lot of speaking engagements, you know, encouraging people to eat healthier, you know, eat the proper foods and diets. And, you know, he cover a wide variety of things. He's an author. You know what I'm saying? Very, very educated young brother. Um, so what was it like for you growing up in Cleveland as a child? You know, well, you know, I was uh, I was really sickly. I grew up in the projects of Cleveland. You know, my mother, she was a drug addict. My father was a you know, was in prison most of the time. So me and my brothers were kind of left to our own devices, uh, then thrown in a foster care system. But um, so for me, it was uh, mostly a, a life of uh, uh, growing up, a life of contemplation. You know, I was into nature, trees, you know, things around me. That was, that was uh, fascinating to me. But at that time, as you know, as teenagers or adolescents and going into teenage years, a lot of people drink and smoke. And so my mindset was like, no, why would people willingly kill themselves? You know, well, why would they do that? And I was thinking this way when I was uh, 10, 11, 12 years old. So uh, this type of thinking led me into health and wellness. And luckily for me, I ran into the right doctors and scientists that really laid the foundation for me for critical thinking when it comes to uh, health and wellness. Okay. 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 Um... So how long have you been doing this now? You know what I'm saying? Like, how long have you been doing research? Well, you know, I became a, a raw foodist when I was about uh, 14 years old. And I found a book that was so profound. The book had a couple of chapters in it talking about the dangers of uh, animal foods and animal products. Now, at that time, my thinking is still immature. I ain't got nobody around me that eat, uh, eat healthy, you know, as far as this book is, is, is telling me. So I had to really learn how to research and, and critical think for myself. So as I got older, I continued those studies. I left high school, I dropped out in, in the 12th grade because I just wanted to do my own study. I was so taken by the information that I, uh, uh, I decided that I wanted to be a doctor, uh, but I didn't know if I wanted to be a heart surgeon, get into cardiology or gastrointestinal physiology. And so nutrition piqued my interest. You know, nutrition kind of lays the foundation to health and wellness. And that, that was that was my, my beginning, my start, my renaissance into health and wellness. Right, right. So for the viewers who don't know, you only eat raw fruits and vegetables, am I correct? Right, raw nuts, uh, drink uh, distilled water or reverse osmosis uh, water. And, but little did I know at that time, uh, speaking about these issues and you know, kind of emerging myself as an educator and teacher, I came to understand that there were a, th a million and one philosophies and outlooks when it came to health. So the question for me as a scientist is, is every outlook different? Is every outlook the truth? I mean, is it true that some people should eat meat? Some people shouldn't. Is it true that some people should take herbs or medication? Some people shouldn't. So it really began me on a journey of uh, really understanding how the body functions. So that's, that I began my, investi my scientific investigations of human physiology and anatomy and really understanding how the body functions, the structure of our teeth, the composition of our saliva, the structure of our skin, the position of our eyes, our fingers, the way we walk, the way we, that all pointed to a certain dietary direction. And so for me, I've created that roar with my uh, uh, descent of taking herbs, you know, herbs are toxic, they're drugs, they're harmful, you should not take herbs. So I kind of tread what controversy exists, but I also tread what the truth leads me. And so that, uh, and with that being said, 
I've been very passionate. When I was 13, I'm now 44. I'm just as passionate now as I was when I was 14 when I discovered this information. Okay, okay. Now I wanted to ask you about something. Um, now, are you into fasting? Do you do you have any experience with fasting, and is it good for you, or is it a bad thing? <clears throat> No, there's a little bit of a different opinion about fasting, but I learned from a doctor who was authoritative on his position on fasting, and all, all the research I've done points to the direction that saving can actually uh, strengthen your health and lengthen your life. Fasting, fasting is very beneficial, and I think it's a shame that the medical system do not utilize fasting as a means to help uh, people survive and live. Fasting is very important. So we want to give a definition, a true definition of what fasting is. And a true definition of fasting is when you discontinue food and drink, except water, you discontinue food and drink for uh, a, a definite period of time until your hunger returns and then you eat. So fasting is very important. It's vital to your health and wellness. And it gives you increased uh, brain power the blood is, is, is the body is more more uh, fit to handle insults from the environment, whether they're from the environment or from our dietary indiscretions. So fasting is, 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 is vital to wellness. OK, OK. Now I got another question um, when you were talking about diets. So in general, would you say that all humans should have one diet or. It, should it be a variety of diets, if you can understand what I'm saying? Should everybody strive to be, you know, raw fruit and raw vegetable and nuts and water? Or is it certain ethnic groups or cer certain groups of people that may need to eat or live that way? Well, that's a, that's a real uh, good question because you have people who say, Blacks should eat a certain way, Asians should eat a certain way, or whites should eat a certain way. But all the evidence that I've discovered, biological, physiological, points to a certain food that is the most superlative. And that food are, are plant foods. So we're talking about nuts, cashews, almonds, walnuts, uh, uh, pistachios. We're talking about apples and oranges and celery and carrots, uh, green leaf, red leaf celery, uh, beer, uh, lettuce, beer, lettuce. So the most uh, nutrient-dense foods on the planet are plant foods. And all humans, regardless of their ethnic background, survive more efficiently on plant foods. We know that animal foods, that humans are carnivores. We don't chase down animals and eat the animal raw. We don't drink blood. We don't eat bones. So we're not a carnivore. So, and we're not herbivores like, like uh, cows and horses. Herbivores uh, may eat grass, they may eat hay. We know that grass is not efficiently digested by the human body. No, no we're not omnivores. In medical school and in, in schools, uh, dietetic schools, they say we're omnivores. An omnivore is an animal that's an everything eater. You eat everything in sight. You eat animal foods, you eat plant foods, you eat insects, you might consume some dirt. You might know, like in the health food stores, they got grass. They went out and mowed, mowed their lawn and now they're selling people grass and calling it wheat grass. And you drink that and it gives you energy. So this is all misleading people. We got to understand we live in a system of greed under capitalism. This country is based on capitalism. It's about greed. It's about you cheating you, stealing your money. They don't care if you're dying or not. It's really, the healthcare industry is probably the most unethical industry on the face of the earth. Mm. So now you got a lot of people who pop their herbal. They say that we should be consuming herbs. The herbs are natural. But herbs may be natural, but they're not natural to the human body. So it's very important to me to provide people with truthful and reliable information in regards to and helping people understand or get some understanding of what foods they should be eating.